Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, my name is Lottie, and um, I'm so excited to be painting with you tonight um, on a Wednesday night. Beautiful. Um, so I will start by just telling a little bit about intuitive painting and what it is and what we'll be doing today. Um, so intuitive painting, it's not um, we're going to let go of uh, an image that you might have in your head, like I want to paint this or I want to paint a landscape or, um, you know, I want to paint in these colors because they look great in my living room. We're going to let go of everything and just um, kind of quiet our mind, tune in within and let our gut feelings and our intuition guide us. Um, intuitive painting is process painting. And what that means is that it's all about the process. So it's not about the end result. Um, it's really about the process, about how you're feeling while you're um, creating your painting, um, all the stuff that you're learning. Um, and so when we get to the end today and you look at your painting and it doesn't look perfect in your eyes, uh, we're not gonna judge that. Um, that wouldn't be fair. Uh, many of you are uh, new to painting or haven't painted ever. And so painting is like everything, uh, you know, it takes practice. And so it's like, like dancing. If you dance for the first time, you wouldn't expect to be able to do the Michael Jackson moonwalk right away. So we're just going to be really gentle and kind with ourselves and really um, enjoy the process and, and be really aware of the process. So really in the moment because you can only really create from the moment, right? So um, we're gonna see like, how, do I how does it feel to put this color right next to that color? How does it feel to make, make a shape first with the, with the white part of my brush and then turn it in the thin part? And like, you know, how does it feel to paint really slow or go really fast? Like all of that has different energy to it, a different feeling. And so we're gonna stick with that. Um, and keep our hands moving in a way that makes us feel alive. Um, and when you feel stuck, which undoubtedly will happen because that's part of the creative process, um, I will give you tips and tricks along the way to just kind of acknowledge that critical voice and just gently push it away and go back to just a place of play and fun because uh, that's the goal tonight. Um, so yeah, so they, they sometimes call it wild intuitive painting because we let go of all expectation and we're releasing the idea of a destination. So really let the process guide us and it will look chaotic in the beginning and maybe a little overwhelming and you're not sure where it goes and you just surrender to that. You're okay with it. You just completely let go and things will start to emerge and that's the start of your path, the start of your, you know, uh, of your painting. So that's a little bit about the process today. Uh, let me think. Because we're with so many today, I um, will really encourage you to paint with me in the beginning. So in the beginning, like maybe the first, I want to give you lots of freedom so you can check in within because it's a personal process, but let's the first 10 minutes or so um, paint with me. And so it's not going to be like paint and sip or have wine and draw or whatever those classes where they tell you exactly to draw. I will just give you pointers. So for example, I'll say, let's draw a line. And there are 50 ways to draw a line, right? You can draw a straight line, you can draw a diagonal line, you can draw a curvy line, uh, a wide line, thin line, uh, with a brush, crayon, whatever, like whatever you want, right? But I will give you some prompts which are like banks of a river so you you the river can flow and you have some banks some guidance um, because if you don't have that if it's completely open it's overwhelming because then you can do anything so really to kind of introduce you to being to really letting go um, and to just experiencing the painting in the moment versus making something or making it look like something to really let go, I will guide you for the first like 10 minutes or something. And then um, you'll probably want to take off and then I'll keep uh, popping in once in a while and giving some pointers. Um, if you have questions, just put them in the chat and then I can answer them. 
Oh, and I really want to encourage you to be your own advocate um, because I can't, I'm not there with you um, and I don't know what you're experiencing. If you have any questions or something doesn't feel right or you're just not sure, please speak up. Because uh, the last time there was a lady uh, in the workshop, she made this amazing mark making tool uh, all by herself. It was super cool. And then I didn't hear from her old workshop long. And by the end, I checked in and she's like, oh, it didn't work. And all she had to do is just really dilute her paint and make it super thin and it would have worked beautifully. So I was like, oh, I wish you would have talked to me like right from the from the get go. So any questions, please uh, let me know. I welcome that. Um, and this is a safe space. I won't judge you. Everyone is busy with their thing. They won't judge you either. So yeah, uh, let's see. I think that covers about everything. Yeah. Um, so what I what I how I would like to start just to kind of loosen up um, is uh, I hope everyone has one sheet of paper, some sort of paper with them. Uh, and some sort of mark making tool it can be a pencil crayon pen sharpie doesn't matter um, and we're just going to do like a two minute exercise just for fun um, like i said just to loosen up um, and maybe you've done it before it's called a uh, blind contour drawing so what we're going to do is you're going to pick one object in your room or maybe my face that's fine too since everybody's looking at my face uh, you can take my face um you're gonna uh, get your pen and then just focus on your object and you're gonna just blindly draw it it has to be one continuous line so you cannot pick up your pen um and you cannot peek okay so it's just you look at the object and you just blindly uh draw um yes so if everybody's ready um i'm i will be doing it i see a beautiful face in front of me that i will be using um so yeah go ahead choose your object uh put your pen down and let's go and no peeking And time's up. Let's, <laughs> let's see. Um, if you want to, you can show your contour drawing. Mine is this. Um... <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I see a lamp and a few other things. Um, so yeah, just very easy, right? And you, sometimes we're surprised by how good it already looks just blindly done. Um, so yeah, that was just for fun. Um, now, uh, before we paint, uh, let's just, uh, um, I'd like to just really kind of like mark that threshold of stepping into our space of painting and creativity and letting the day be the day. Uh, so I always love to start with a little meditation, just a few minutes to really just arrive in this space, connect within. Um, and then once we're done with that, I'll, I will start sh and show you how to set up your palette. And um, we're off painting. So uh, any questions before, before we go to the meditation? I don't think so, right? Okay. All right, so take a seat, get comfortable. Um, have your feet on the floor, nice and grounded. And just close your eyes to the world. Take a few deep breaths. <sighs> and with the next out breath, let go of everything that happened before this class. And 
on the next out breath. Let go of everything that's waiting for you after this class. And then with the next out breath, really arrive right here in this moment. And just focus on your breath for a little while. Notice how it flows in and out. And enjoy the, the ease and the, the peace and the comfort of just being quiet for a moment and just breathing. and feel a sense of gratitude um, for this moment and for painting tonight and being here. Just create a sense of gratitude. And now make that feeling bigger and spread it all through your body. Gratitude from your toes, up your legs, up your torso and your arms, and your neck and your head. You can just feel it radiating off your skin. And then when you're ready, feel your feet, feel your seat. Maybe wiggle your fingers. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. Ah, um, so yes, marinate in that feeling, in that energy for a moment. Um, and um, I feel connected to you now in a different way. It completely changes the moment. So I love starting like this. Um, I will start showing you how to set up our palette because since we are going to be um, messing around a lot um, if you use all colors it will turn brown um, so i my suggestion is that you either stay with the cool colors or with the warmer colors in the beginning for the first layer because those you can mix to no end and it will never get brown um, so the cool so i will show you there should be uh, this is my you should see my fingers and my palette um, so uh, yeah, just feel into what colors speak to you. The um, cooler colors are the greens and the blues 
Um, and purple, I don't see purple here right now, but those are more the cooler colors. Um, so you can stick in that group um, or you can stick with the reds and yellows and oranges. Um, like I said, this is just, we're gonna work in layers. So this is just for the first layer or so. Later on, you can always add other colors, but just, you know, to give yourself an, uh, yeah, an, an easy start. Um, try to stick to either the, the, the greens, blues, and purples in the beginning, or the um, reds and yellows and oranges. Um, and then you always want to use white. Uh, so the way I do it is I always put a bunch of white in the middle of my palette. And um, if you want to, you can do a little black, but be super, super careful with black because just use it in tiny bits because it will take over your painting very quickly. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit. Um, and then I think I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the more springy colors with the yellows and reds. Um, and then also one other suggestion I have for you is to just, um, Put a little bit of paint on your palette and you can always put more because those paints are um, made of polymers and polymers are uh, plastics and so you will be so sad to be washing a lot of that down the drain um, at the end of the day because it will be in in our environment and so I always suggest using little bits of paint and adding more as you go. Um, also my other tip is to just uh, this is Banks of the River again, to just choose three, maybe four colors and no more. Um, because that it's the same as what I said before. It will, um, it, it will really help you out with not being overwhelmed. And if you just use a few colors, you already create a sense of unity in your canvas, no matter how crazy you go. Um, and you can do so, I, I'll, I'll encourage you to mix some colors today. You can do so much even with three colors. I mean, you can add some white and make it lighter. You can add a tad of black, make it darker. You can mix with the colors with each other. And so, um, yeah, so for now, when you set up your palette, choose either warm or cold, choose three or four colors. Um, and yes, go ahead and do that. And then I'll give I'll give you a minute, and then we'll we'll start together, okay? Oh, and get some some music uh, going, some music that you enjoy. It can be really easy and calm, or it can be uh, you know something you can dance to, whatever floats your boat. Uh, and I'll I'll give you a minute, and then we'll we'll start together. Yeah, you can. Uh, I can turn it a bit sideways, but I can turn that up a little bit. If you go down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so is everyone ready to go? Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so how I, let's see, I have my music in my ear. Um, I hope you have some music going. Um, so what you will want to do, how we'll start uh, together is, I don't know which two you have, maybe this one. Um, can, can they both see my face and this one if I go back to front or should I just talk here? Okay, no, this is fine. So take a brush. Um, I take a wide brush um, and then dip it in water so it's nice and wet. Put a little color on this corner and a different color on that corner. Dip it again in some water so it will flow easily. And we will just start, uh, just to start us off. Um, I encourage you to, to uh, feel the music and... Um, kind of just go for it, paint blindly and just move. You can open your eyes or close them. If you close them, it's it's easier to really let go. Um, and don't paint with your 
with your hand and your wrist, like paint with your whole body, okay? So let, let's get our body involved here. Um, so make it a dance. So, you know, just go for it. And if you go off the canvas, it's fine. Just keep moving and hit the canvas back up here. I can uh, here. just really just go for it. Let the music move you, let your whole body move. And let this be a full body experience. Um, and uh, I will paint with you. Turn on the music. And yeah, close, close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. Get a good amount of paint on your brush. And you can continue that way, or you can open your eyes, see what you've created, be surprised, and really check in. How did that feel? How did you feel in your body? Um, stay with that, because remember, it's all about the process. Um, how did that feel? Um, and then um, choose another color. I'm going to go for white. Maybe like really get some white going. A nice wet brush. And let's put it somewhere right next to the lines that, that you made before. Um, and just see what happens. You, kind of, you can do it in one place, or you can do it in more places. Um, I can do here. And just, again, just really create from the moment, just really tune in with how that feels. Don't think about it too much. Just, just play. Just be free. Let go. I'm not thinking at all about composition or what it's going to look like. Let go. All of that. Just, just what seems fun. What seems interesting. Uh, white is a good color to choose because like you see um, white just mixes with the blends with the colors right and so you get all kinds of funny wonderful surprises happening um, yeah I love, I love that I love how the colors blend and mix and something you could have never thought up it just happens um, yeah and keep your brush nice and wet and just keep playing. And like you see, I'm moving all over the canvas. I just See whatever my eyes calls me to, and I just move there. Just keep moving.
And um, another fun thing to do while the paint is still wet is to etch into your paint. So I invite you to um, just turn around your brush and use the back and make some sort of mark. It can, it can be the first word that comes to mind or it can be uh, quick lines or it can be circles or, or um, really it can be anything. Just see what it feels like to etch. If it doesn't etch very well, like my paint is very thin, you can just uh, take a little, take, put some more paint on your brush uh, and just, you know, choose a corner. Put like a thick layer of paint and then put it over over a colorful part because the way you etch into it, it will shine through. Um, yeah, so just kind of explore that. Um, etching. And again, don't think about it, just see how it feels. And keep playing a little bit, whatever, whatever your gut feeling gets you to be. So another tip is you don't want to use super thick layers of paint because it will take longer to dry and then it gives you less opportunity to play. So um, yeah, thin layer of paint is better. And then short period of time that we have today. Okay, and then um, everybody grab your canvas and turn it 90 degrees on the side. Um, and if you, um, I invited you to bring some sort of mark making tool. So bring out your mark making tool and um, just in a few places in your canvas, make, make a mark, see what happens. Um, I'm gonna mix. Enough paint on it. I have a, an old camping camping pot lid, so I'm gonna try to make some circles with this. Um, it's definitely always fun to go off the um, off the canvas because it gives it gives the illusion of uh, something continuing. Um, when I have smaller groups, I always love to ask what kind of tools people have. Uh, the last time um, I brought a potato and I, <laughs> I cut the potato in a kind of an oval shape and stamped with that. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, if you, 
If you have free hands, you have a moment, maybe type in the chat some of the toys that you're playing with. Um, I'm very curious to hear. Anything really goes. And then if you're done with your mark making, I let's get intimate with our painting um, and get some paint on our fingers. Uh, you can, um, I have it on the tips of my fingers right now. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless. You can go and rain down on your canvas. Oh, there you go. You can go and rain down on your canvas. Uh, you can stamp with one finger. Uh, you can just smear with your finger. Um, you can do the side of your thumb and make oval shapes. Um, but yeah, just feel, I think I'm just gonna drag it down. Feel what it's like to feel the canvas and, um, or maybe you were already thinking <laughs> with your fingers, good for you. Um, yeah, just do a few, few places here and there, random. Um, and then let's turn our canvas again. I just have you turn just uh, to have you detach from what you're doing. Um, because I know in the beginning we have a white canvas and it's like, yes, I'm going wild. And as soon as there's something on the canvas, your mind will start to attach and make stories. And so turning your canvas constantly will force you to let go of whatever you're already attaching to. So stay in a place of play of letting go of just the process of feeling. Check in with yourself, how does it feel? And when there's a critical voice, just gently push it away and say like, okay, I hear you, I don't, I don't need you today. Um, so yes, so let's, uh, let's see. What I'd like to do, I think, um, let's draw, where's my, Let's uh, let's let's play with um, with drawing a line and giving the line a certain emotion. So, uh, for example, uh, draw a timid line or name something. Take something in mind. Like, what would a timid line look like? Or a frenzied line? Or a happy line? Or an angry line? Or uh, I mean, you name it. Like the sky's the limit. And just think, think of an emotion. Um, and, and then just, and it doesn't matter, right? There's no way of doing this wrong. Just make a line and just uh, see if you can express some sort of uh, emotion. And don't think about it too much, okay? Just go with what, wherever your hand takes you. So really shut down your brain, your thinking brain, and you can even close your eyes and just see, I'm not even thinking right now. I'm just seeing where my hand takes me. I'm thinking of um, happy or inclusive, like to, to, to connectedness with you, togetherness. So it feels like a circle. And there it goes. I don't know if you, how, how well you can see my hand. You can move it closer. Um, so yeah, so just experiment with that. And uh, if you like that, you can do a few emotions. And don't worry again about what it looks like. We're doing many layers, so you'll cover up many of those later on. Um, just uh, be in the moment, feel the moment, be quiet the moment, and, and, and uh, experiment with that.
Um, and then something else you can try. I don't know if you have tissue paper or like a, a napkin or something like that. You can, um, tissue paper will just blend in right in with, uh, with wet paint. So you can just uh, see what that's like. Um, if you don't have tissue paper, maybe you have a, a stencil you can play with, um, or this would be a great moment to try and mix a color. Just take two colors if you're right next to each other on the palette and, and mix them, see what happens, and then use that color somewhere on your palette. Um, I'm, I'm using a little glue here, or, or, or medium is what they call it, matte medium, because my canvas is kind of dry. Um, where are my tissue papers? Uh, yeah, just use this moment to to play a little bit, or or, or mix some white with um, with one of your colors, and put it on the canvas and see what it feels like. So see how it feels to mix a color and uh, put it on your canvas, just really be present. And then my last um, tip for you, and then I'll just let you play on your own for a little while and explore, is um, create contrast. And contrast can be created in many different ways. So for me, it's all kind of the same colors right now. So I could do uh, a really dark color. Um, for example, and instantly when you have dark and light next to each other, it will start to sing. It's a wonderful trick. So uh, you can put some dark color um, or another way of creating contrast is I have all those organic flowy lines, maybe create like one really straight edge uh, or a really sharp line and see what that does. Um, and kind of experiment with contrast in that way. Um, so yeah, and then and then I'm sure you can you already have certain ideas or feelings or things you want to try and play with. So just uh, paint on your own for a little bit. Um, stay stay with that feeling of joy and playfulness and letting go of expectations and it having to go somewhere. Um, just really uh, feel and be present. Okay. Um, so contrast, I'm gonna, uh, actually maybe if you want to, you can turn your canvas one last time, uh, create some contrast. If your paint doesn't flow easily enough, just just dip it in water. That's also something to play with. What does it feel like to paint with a really dry brush? Um, you can kind of like feather or with a very wet brush, see what happens. Just let this be a time of experimentation and play and you'll learn so much that way at the end of this workshop because you've allowed yourself to play and experiment 
in so many different ways. You have already learned so much about painting and materials and how things respond and react and what pain does. And so, yep, just allow yourself to play. I'm still absolutely not thinking about the whole of the piece. It's too overwhelming to figure it out. So I'm really just going from spot to spot and respond to whatever seems interesting to me there. So this seemed interesting. Now this catches my eye and I'll just move there. So I'm constantly dancing and moving. Um, and in that way, just staying really uh, free and open. Um, yeah. And it's so hard for me not to check in with you. I don't know how big this group is. Is everybody doing well? Everybody flowing? Having a good time? Thumbs up. I hope I trust you do. Otherwise, just let me know, okay? I'm here. Please ask me as many questions as you want. Or just let me know that you're having a good time. Or if you're stuck, that's fine too. Um, that's actually, um, it's very interesting because that's, even I've seen so many interviews and spoken to so many artists that do this for decades. Um, and this is really, um, the creative process is really that you start like, yes. And then at some point you'll get kind of like get, get stuck, get in a place of, uh, yeah, the awkward teenager is what they sometimes call it. Like the painting doesn't really know yet what it wants to be. And so um, if that happens to you and you feel contracted or stuck, 
just notice it and know that that's completely normal. That's part of the creative process. You're doing it right. Um, and just keep moving. The only thing you can do is you, you have to keep moving. Don't stop because then, then, then nothing will change. So you just keep moving. Just, just make little marks. Um, respond to whatever tiny part of you of the painting is interesting to you um, and just keep moving. And at some point you'll move through it again and go back to a yes. Um, so just know that if that happens to you, um, which it probably will, just keep, keep moving. Um, also at this point, if, you're, if your first layer feels pretty dry or, or you have parts of your painting that are, are dry, feel free to bring in some, some other colors if you really want to. Uh, meaning like, the, like either of the, of the opposite color group. So if you were painting with warm colors like me, you can add some cool colors or vice versa. Um, or just stick to your few colors. Um, and uh, make it easy for yourself that way. But just know, I, I don't want to completely restrict you, restrict you, just know that you're completely free to do so. Another thing that I rarely do is clean my brush <laughs> because I love just dipping one color in the other and it just having, uh, and it just mixes, you know, and you get unexpected colors um, and it's just, it's just fun. So uh, if that feels like fun to you, definitely do not clean your brush and just see what happens. Um, another tip that I forgot to tell you in the beginning, you see me uh, standing. Uh, if you're sitting down, try, try painting standing because it's, it allows you to move, it allows you to, to be, it has a different energy to it and um, it will really help you just stay free. Um, I'm starting to feel, I started to feel a little tight there. So I'm just gonna uh, turn on some music that, I, that will just you know, put me in a fun mood and I'm moving and maybe you can even move while you're painting 
or just take a break and just shake it out. Um, but yeah, if, if you're sitting down, try try uh, standing up and painting if you, if you can, of course. If you, if you cannot, then yes, of course, it will be fine. Music doesn't want to play. <laughs> Come on. Let's be patient. And remember, you're at home, so you can just go wild and go dance crazy. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> <laughs> and sing, or if you can sing, hum, even that completely takes you out of your mind. So move your body, dance, hum, or sing, and, and you'll notice it will just bring you right back to the place of play and letting go. Um, and yeah, like I said, you're at home, so you can let go. Dance paint party together. Uh, 
can do as well is um, play with value, which is basically just make it, uh, just get some white paint on your brush and here and there, just uh, add in some white and, and see what happens. And you'll see it starts to kind of light up. N not everywhere, just a little few places. Um, and I'll provide some interest to your painting. Can I ask you a question? Hello? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I have my music. Who's asking? Yes. Hi, it's Leslie. Um, I'm a little bit unsure just about kind of the water to paint. Yours looks like a watercolor. It's really beautiful. And it looks like a watercolor and mine's not looking like that. And so I'm wondering kind of about the water paint issue. Oh, for me, I am, I'm using acrylics. Um, but I just um, really make sure that my, there's just a lot of water in it, you're right. Um, I just really make sure that my brush is super wet at all times, so it really flows. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the whole trick. Um, so just make sure your brush is really wet, dip it in the paint and dilute it a little bit and paint with it and see what happens. Um, and then actually what I did with the yellow, is I went really dry. So I just put, uh, with a dry brush, I put a little bit of yellow on the top and I just feathered it. I'm just like brushing it over the painting, just very lightly. And then it starts to uh, cover it up, but not, uh, you know, you can still see through. Like you can do this with white paint or red paint, just take very little and go dry brushing over it. So you can still see what's behind it. Um, so, but, and also if you dilute your paint and you make it very watery, the same will happen, of course. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, just play. And it's also fun to have some area, actually what I love, speaking of contrast, um, is to have some translucent areas like this, like you can see through, in contrast with some areas that are really thick and you cannot see through, uh, they call it opaque. So that contrast of opaque and translucent just makes it so yummy and interesting to look at. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say if you have a lot of opaqueness going on, try some translucence uh, right next to it, like by really diluting your paint and making it watery. Um, and it's a really fun contrast. So yes, play with that. Thank you for asking me a question because then <laughs> I, I know we're connecting in some way. that you're using on your canvas right now? What are you using on your canvas right now? Is that a, a pastel or a the crayon? Paint, or the, the paint I'm using? Yeah, is that paint or it's a sponge? I can't really see what's in your hand. Sponge, yes. Oh, got it, got it. okay. So I'm constantly uh, painting with, um, I'm just like you guys, I'm constantly trying and playing and whatever calls me. So um, I'm painting with different tools. So I've done the brush in my hands and I just felt like um, continuing to lightly kind of cover up this area. So I kind of wetted my sponge a little bit and smeared it out. If you have a sponge, it's a really fun uh, mark maker too. So if you keep it dry and you dip it in your thick acrylic paint and just start stamping with it, it also creates a really, or if you have a very wet area right now, you just go over it with this, with, um, sponge, dry sponge, it will start to blend really nicely. Um, so if you have a sponge, you just grab a kitchen sponge. It's, it's a fun tool to, to play around with. Uh, thank you for asking. Thank you. <laughs> Put in this ear because I'm, I can hear you better.
Hi, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. You mentioned in the email um, that listed the items we could bring bubble wrap. And I'm wondering what you would do with bubble wrap. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you're asking. Um, yes, I have the, yep, I have bubble wrap here. Um, so you can use it in, in different ways. Um, if you have a, a very wet area in your painting, you can just push it right in and pull it off and you'll have a really nice imprint. Mm -hmm. thing you can do is, let's see, I can do this. Uh, you get your bubble wrap and you just smear the paint on. Uh huh. And then you just press it on your painting. Let's see, where shall we press it? Uh, we can do a little in here. You just press it on the painting. And then you pull it off and you'll have. Um, Oh, wow. Okay. Do I need to bring it closer? I don't know. Yeah, I can see it. That's cool. Yeah. So it's a really fun way to just make marks. So yeah, definitely play around with that. Uh, yeah. If there's, if you have any other questions about tools that were on the list, please, yeah, please shoot. Can I, I, I have a related question, I guess. Like yeah. when you're doing intuitive painting, I imagine there's many different techniques you could use to mark the painting. And is there a point where it, it becomes gimmicky? If you have too many, you mean it becomes too busy and overwhelming? Yeah. Or, or what do you mean with gimmicky? Gimmicky. How do like? I wonder if it's someone like else can help me. No, it means like it's too obvious. Like you're a crafter, as maybe I don't mean that to be derogatory, as opposed to a painter. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so this is your mind at work, right? Like this is your mind creating stories and ah. you know, in box, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. now I look like a crafter instead of a painter. I'm not a real artist. <laughs> yeah, just let go of that. Um, okay. Because uh, no, and every, no, it will not look gimmicky. Um, every painter has their own style. Um, what you're doing comes completely from you right now. I mean, there's no one who can reproduce what you are doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, don't be afraid of that. Just let go because that is that little voice in your mind, right? And it's so hard to let go of that. I think yeah. the painting is incredibly hard, but, but controlling that little bugger in here is incredibly hard too. So yeah, just let go of that. Um, stand up, shake it out uh, and just, just go back to how it feels, what you're doing. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and it, thank just you. start playing again. Just turn your canvas and see if there's one area that looks cool to you, repeat it somewhere. And like, oh, another tip um, is if you repeat something that you like a few times, you create rhythm mm -hmm. and it will start to also bring you an interest to your painting. So um, that has nothing to do with your question. But that's another thing you can do. If there's something on your painting you like or a color you like, you can mm -hmm. repeat, uh, repeat it in a few spots and see, see what happens. Um, and if you don't like it, you can always just cover it up, so. Okay. Um, and definitely also your, it's likely that your canvas is pretty full like mine. Um, feel free to st step back once in a while. Um, just take a few steps back, look at it and see, because your canvas will look completely different if you stand two yards away from it versus right on top of it. So take a few steps back and see what you're seeing. Um, what do you like and what do you not like? We're not going to focus on what you don't like. You're just going to focus on, on the little, there's probably little areas or little bits of your painting that you like, and you just go to those and just respond to those. 
um, and play with that. And in that way, we're, we should, you keep building your painting. Um, or maybe if you have a lot of lines, maybe step back and see if you see an interesting shape. Like so often I, I turn it and I see, I don't know, like a pod or a bird or just an interesting shape. And I just go with that. Um, so really just really, it's a flow, it's a dance, you know, just take it easy and um, stay in that place of ease. Um, and, and don't be afraid to let go of certain areas of your painting. Maybe something worked before and now your painting has changed and it doesn't work anymore. So feel free to cover it up and, and just let go. And I just keep turning once in a while. I don't know, I'm not really inspired by anything. So I turn it and instantly my eye will go to something new. Just baby step by baby step. And slowly something will start to emerge and happen. If an area feels too busy, like for me, this feels too busy. I do that, that dry, you should really try this too, this dry feathering thing. So I put a little bit of paint. I usually go for white because it's a good jumping off point. Um, I just very little and I just start brushing it, dry brushing it over it. So you don't cover it up completely, still see it shining through. But in that way, yeah, you can always cover it up more, right? Uh, then I'll probably step back and see what that does, how it feels. Keep checking in with how it feels, right?
Um, I just keep, I'll just keep talking out loud in the hope it's to your benefit. Uh, to me, my painting feels a little stale. So I'm actually uh, gonna break my own, <laughs> own rule and just add a pop of color. Um, maybe like a bright blue or something, you know, to make it zing. Um, so, Uh, that's yet another way of con creating contrast, right? Um, yeah, thinking contrast is, uh, yeah, if you create contrast in your painting in different ways, it just makes it so interesting. So I don't worry about it, even if I don't like it, this decision, I can always cover it up, right? So I'm, I, I, I don't allow myself to go to the place of like, oh no, I messed it up, or because I trust, I just fully trust that in the end it will come together. And whatever I don't like, I can just cover it up. Just paint. Oh, I'm smearing it with a rag, by the way, and a paper towel. It's also a great tool for just blending and
And remember when you're in that feeling of, of feeling stuck, just take a break, literally shake out your body or dance for a minute um, and just let it go. And then come back to your canvas uh, and you'll look at it with different eyes and just do something, do one little movement to just keep yourself moving. Remember that it's, it's, it really is part of the creative process and you will get out of it. Um, and then you'll just feel so great. <laughs> um, but you have to keep moving. question yeah While working with the tissue paper before were you sticking it were you sticking it on the canvas or were you just using it on the canvas because i stuck some on the canvas and then i wondered if it was going to stay like on the painting yes so if you stick it right on wet paint it will stay if it's kind of dry just put some water over it and you'll see it okay. blend in um and it okay. will stay um if it and then most likely later on you'll paint a little bit over it and so that will work as glue too if it really if it doesn't if well with the water it will stay if later on for some reason it does come loose you can always put a little yeah i use um what they call matte medium but even some mod podge or a little bit of glue will work too but usually i just i don't use any glue i just put it in wet paint or you can even go on purpose put a little wet paint down and put your tissue paper in it um, and it will it will stay for sure. Okay, I was I was sticking my tissue paper on the canvas and kind of merrily going on, and then I was like, wait a minute. So I just wanted to check in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, it'll work. All right, thank you. Just a question. Yeah. Do, do you um do you always um well the canvas is white. So does that is that completely covered or do you use the white in the canvas instead of painting over in white? I I usually paint over it. Okay. Um, but just because of my style, because I'm all over the place, there's no way I could keep a place white. Um, but you certainly can. Actually, I've, I've, uh, sometimes I paint on raw canvas, just the fabric. Like this is treated with uh, gesso, the ones that you buy in the store, but you can buy the. And yeah, on purpose, I leave. I leave areas blank because I, I like the look of, of that. Um, well, I, find, oh, yeah. I have a lot of lines in mine and the white of the canvas is showing through actually and, okay yeah 
and I, I like the way it is. Now, if I paint white on it, it's going to be different. Okay, so so you said the, the most important thing, so you like the way it looks, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then keep it that way, because this is your painting. You're calling the shots. There's no there's no rules. This is this is your thing. This is your creation. So if you leave it blank and you like it that way, that's you. Like that's a moment of joy right there. That's you know, keep it and honor it. And uh yeah, then absolutely keep it that way. So yeah, more power to you. Okay, thank you. I'm actually trying to do some more contour drawings. <laughs> To, to see if I can incorporate them in my painting. So I'm looking at the little frames here on my screen, if you're wondering what I'm doing. Trying to uh, do something original. We'll see if it works out. Hi. Hi, what did you uh, use to draw the line, um, say, the line on the um, upper left in the center? Yes, yes. That one? Yes. Oh, good question. Um, I use what is called, there's very little left of it. <laughs> I use what is called a, uh, let's see, Stabilo. Pencil, anyways, it's called a Stabilo pencil. It's yes. a black pencil, but it's um, water soluble. So when it comes in contact with water, it will dilute. So, um, so I love to draw with this on the canvas because if it get here, let me show you. So it can just look like a like a you know like a thin line. Mm. When it gets wet, like I'll dip it wet. Mm. It just becomes like a, where can I show you? It just becomes like a thick, uh, oh, okay. You know what? If you go over it with a little brush, that works too. Like if you go over it, you see how it becomes a thicker line? It becomes really sharp. That's because it, it dissolves in water. So yeah, so it's a uh, water soluble. Same for those crayons. So the blue that I used is this crayon. I don't know where it is here. And so uh, when it gets wet, it can become like a really beautiful uh, line like that. So this is, yeah, if you buy any art supply, this is one of my favorites. It's the Caron Dash. Yeah, my thing is so dirty. Um, <laughs> Caron Dash water, neo color to I think, water soluble. It's really super fun. So that's what I used. You mix it with acrylic paint. You, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. And you, a lot of people use it for uh, acrylic painting. Yeah, for uh, for uh, um, for um, aquarelle, like the you know the water painting and watercolor. Um, yeah, you can use it like that. You can also use a regular uh, oil-based crayon, but that's mm -hmm. harder to cover up because mm -hmm. oil and, and acrylic paint or oil and water, you know, they resist each other. So. My canvas is small, but so far this is what. It's how it's going. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I love that. Oh, there's so much like movement. And how do you feel about it? I, I, I'm probably hard on myself, waste of plastic. <laughs> no, you're too hard. Oh my, you say it looks too plastic? Well, you said plastic. This is plastic, right? So I, oh, this is plastic. Uh, if I wash my glass, the, 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 I drained the plastic into the environment. Oh, that was our paint. It's like a, it's like a plastic. It's a, you mean the material? Acrylic, yes. Yeah. Acrylic paint. <laughs> don't think about that. But what you what you're creating is beautiful, though. Well, thank I mean, you. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the unity of those colors. You know, the reds and um, oranges and and, and yellows. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. Gorgeous. 
Oh, gorgeous. Yes, I can see the joy in that. So I feel like I I've reached a stopping point. Like there was a couple mm -hmm. points where I was like, okay, just keep going. And then I'm like, no, now I have to cover that up because I don't like that. <laughs> um, so like, how do you describe when you're done? Like, I mean, so I'm yeah, so did you reach a stopping point because you feel stuck and you just don't know what to do next? Or do you feel like it's complete? Or I, I think it's complete and I don't want to keep going. Okay, so, so you feel, uh, okay, so, so when you're looking at it, you, you feel happy? You're, yeah. You're happy with how, I would, where it's going? Oh my goodness, look at that. I love how, you know, it's so cool how we all paint together and make such different things. Yeah, that is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, if you truly feel like, um, normally I'd say like, you know, uh, keep pushing yourself, but if you truly feel like you've you've reached the point of like, hey, I'm happy with it. And um, this this was such an interesting process and I'm, I'm at peace right now. And I'd say, take a cup of tea, uh, sit down and like uh, on a few yards and just look at it, take it in for a moment um because we have still a little bit of time to go we'll probably paint for 15 minutes longer um so yeah just see how you feel or you can do a, a very small uh, quick uh, if you have paint left over smear it on the next canvas that's what i often do is to not throw away paint i just you know whatever left over I put on a new one and it's a great beginning for the next time um but but yeah does that feel thank good you. yeah thank you okay <laughs> Hi, hi, this is Betsy. Can I, I'm, I think I'm done. Okay. I'll show you mine. Okay. So yeah, I'd say like do the same and just take a cup of tea and kind of look at it, take it in and maybe uh, you'll see a few things that you still want to add or tweak or whatever, or maybe not. And you just, you know, you just sit with it and, you know, be grateful for, uh, for having done something so different um, and creative on a Wednesday night. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure if I'm done or not. <laughs> um, so can you, can you want to look at mine? Or can you see mine? Yes, absolutely. And can you see it or do I have to can I move the computer? Is this, is this Gary Gelderman? Yeah. Okay. Um, so can you? I no down a little, Jerry. Oh, I'm Maybe down. you can keep it. Uh, hold it up to the screen. Uh, yeah, go a little lower. Lower, lower. I just see a beautiful. I just see the ha half of your painting. So uh, move your camera down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I see uh, lots of blues and, uh, and a little purple and green and white streaks. Very calming, beautiful. Um, yeah, what you can do is you can uh, leave it very abstract like this. Mm -hmm. um, I, or what you can do is, uh, oh, okay. Oh, here I see it a little better. Um, like, how, how do you feel, like what, what, what things are you happy with and what do you, like, talk to me. Well, how do you feel about it? Uh, what uh, things are you happy about? What is working for you? I like it, but I think that maybe I need something else and I'm not sure what else to put on it. Okay. So, um, um, and I, so, I mean, I don't hate it, so I kind no, of- we can, we can know, let's keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's I, something yeah. else. What you, what you could do is um, add a point of focus, which is, it can be anything really. You could draw a, a flower uh, in the middle or just a circle or a triangle um, and just create one popping element. Like for example, like here, I was like you, my background was just kind of like blue. Yeah. I decided to free draw, even if you think I can draw, Free draw like some botanical shape and it instantly brings some interest okay um, you can stay abstract or if you you can also um because everything is very fluid 
Mm-hmm. So maybe if you want to stay very abstract, maybe like create where's my like maybe create like one really sharp line somewhere. You know what I mean? Um, which feels odd, but once you do it, you'll see it creates some interest. And all yeah, that- I I kept like going to different direction. Like I would go a different direction, then I came kept coming back to all this the same direction. So yeah. I just can't get away from that, but it feels like it needs something else. So, yeah. So I'd say uh, create contrast in some sort of way. If you want to stay in the same direction, you cre- could create some very straight lines in this way down, or uh, you're horizontal, I think, because you have everything very fluid. So creating mm-hmm. very straight lines that is an option for contrast. Uh, put some really dark in there as a contrast would be an option. Uh, Like I said, put uh, like a botanical shape or whatever, put a blind contour drawing in there. Um, That's actually what I'm playing with by drawing it on tissue paper. And I might just pop it on my... uh, Mm, Okay. So so I don't know if you wanna stay on the abstract or if you wanna uh, bring in like an element, like um, that's maybe something to explore for yourself. that, would that I help? used a cre- I used a credit card to draw some lines on mine. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Are awesome. Yeah, I can, I can show you what it looks like. Um, hang on a sec. Don't mind the mess. Let's see. Yeah, create like a really tight pattern. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Such talent in the room. Oh my goodness. That's I very cool. That. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, I, and I really liked how the credit card, you could just draw a straight line on it in various ways. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, that, I had fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do the same or create like some really fine patterns with the credit card since everything is very yeah. fluid mm-hmm. and loose. Just think contrast mm-hmm. and see where that takes you. Um, and okay. don't be afraid to mess it up. Um, just keep going because you're still in that. I think you're in the awkward teenager phase, as we call it. <laughs> So don't give up on the teenager, you know, just love on it and just uh, be patient. Just, yeah, I, I play a little bit more and uh, see, see what happens. Does, does, does that feel good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think when we're nearing a good point too, we should definitely take, we should have everyone hold up and we can take a screenshot in gallery mode. That way we can maybe get a picture. That'd be super great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I will just say as like a survivor of art school, even though that's not what I do now. um, Yeah, I mean, paintings are, well, in any art, it's, it's not like a, it's not like a math equation, like there's no one right answer, there's, which is like the beautiful and horrible thing about art. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that is absolutely true because then it's like, it's so open, right? It's really about finding your own way, yeah. And what I, what I really try, because in art school, they can, uh, you know, they can group together and kind of like do a critique and focus on what's not working. And so I try to turn it on its head and really just, stay focused on what is working work with what's working uh, to, to stay in that open place otherwise you just feel shut down and sh- you know so um yeah so i absolutely agree with what you said yeah it's it's a blessing so I, have, workers, but. I have a question does i know this is a technique you can do in watercolor but with acrylic um have you ever thrown salt crystals onto your painting like when the paint's wet i haven't tried it but i'm pretty sure it doesn't work <laughs> okay, I was just wondering. You know, really about the, uh, the salt um, slurping up the water is what I was saying, absorbing the water and acrylic I think is too thick. Uh, but you can try, if you really water down your acrylic paint and you toss big salt crystals on it, it will work. Okay. Um, yeah, I like the experimenting uh, mode. I don't know if this is something I'm... I think I'm just gonna, I don't know how much time, I don't know how much time. I'm gonna make a radical move. Uh, 
there and turn. I'm going to make a really road. That's too long. Mr. Buff, I like your painting. That's lovely. Thanks. It's awfully dark in here, so I didn't know if it was showing up well. Okay. So, I don't know. I like this part. It looks like an egg. Hmm. Yes. I like the color. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say the colors beautiful. are really awesome. Yeah, I like the color. Thanks. And Saint Patrick's awesome. inspired, huh? Sorry. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Green and I don't know purple. There's a few little touches of yellow. Mm. I don't know if they show. This is yes. so yes. cool. This is yeah. so cool. How did you do the um? In the middle, there's this shape. This shape. Well, what is that? Can you bring it closer? How did you uh, do the texture? There's a lot of texture. Which, which um, yes, there the arch. Oh, okay, so that was um, this kind of uh, it was this one. It was this one, this one, and so I started with the purple and I went like that, and then I just did like this all the way down. Yes. And some were short and some were long and skinny. And then I just, uh, under the purple, I, I uh, wanted to imitate that with the green. It is so cool. And you, you see here perfectly how you have really um, f uh, fluid, like kind of a translucent parts and then like the thick texture in, 
in contrast to it, but it's still still in the same use. It's how do you feel about it? Thank you. I like it. I don't really know yeah. what it is except for an egg and somehow or another a, a darn crow wound up in it. <laughs> See, and there's really good price to pop up. Yeah. This looks like a little girl maybe watching the crow. Sure, sure. It's it's you know, I can so it's beautiful and I can so tell them the process, you know, like you really you got it. You you got it. Thank uh, you. So yay. Uh yeah, thank you for sharing. Let me put on my uh, I'm creating all of you guys. Um these are a little time to really work it out. <clears throat> it's really a grid of, of all of you guys. So I decided at the very last moment that I want to just go with that. Um, and we'll paint for it is 746. Okay, let's uh, paint five more minutes or so. Um, and of course, it doesn't mean that you're that you're done if you don't feel you're not done. Um, you keep all the supplies at home, so you can always continue or finish it tomorrow or some other day. Um, mine is not quite done yet. Angie Spring, I love the colors you're using. Thanks. Um, never painted before, so this is fun. <laughs> I, that you looks great. Each other. I don't see. Oh, I see Angie Spring. Oh, yeah. Oh, now she's gone. Okay. Oh, I, I brought her into the spotlight view. Oh, here. okay. <laughs> You've never painted before? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a joy. How do you feel? I love it actually. Um, yeah, right. Got my kids to be involved too because they're around. Yeah. So it's like, okay, let's get some canvas and yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. It's I absolutely love it. And you really embrace contrast too, which is um yeah. That's oh, I, I love, love contrast actually. I like whites and blacks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keep going. Just Keep doing it, and uh, oh my goodness, it's just, it's so, uh, it's so, it's my lifeline. It just fills you up, you know, and you can always do it, and uh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Thanks. <laughs> I often paint with my, uh, paint with my kids too. They, you know, they're so uh, free, so they get me off starting uh, often. Like, uh, yeah. yeah Sherry, <laughs> well, yours is beautiful. I'm <laughs> Rigid. Okay. So uh, having my kids help me makes me feel a little bit more free because I'm more like, oh, it's got to be processed. You got to do this, this, and that. And they're like, oh, just paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't exactly. That's why kids are great. I don't. Who's this Sherry with? Yeah. This my is mine. Goodness. I I I'm stunned by what everybody's creating. This is <sighs> so beautiful. How, this was, how... Yes. This was tell fun. me. It was fun and and very freeing. Right. It, yeah. it, well, if you allow yourself, right, because sometimes people can really, I mean, me included, can really get in the stuck feeling. But if yeah. you're able to really just stay with the fun and with the process and how it feels and just letting go, it's oh, that it looks like yours. And it's just pure joy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. Uh, anyone else want to show their work? No. Uh, Mary's. Got a lot of people in, in gallery mode. This is fine. Can you see mine? I don't see anything. Lottie, are you able to go into gallery mode? Um, Brooke, am I able to go in gallery mode? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say there's there's a lot of different. We could we could spend hours. Is it? Yeah, exactly. That's oh man, you guys, everyone's looks so great. Lot of you want me to spotlight some of them? Oh, now you're on mute. <laughs> Autumn's looks like a face. 
to me. This one? Autumn Thompson's. Oh. Say something, Autumn, and you might. Okay, I'll spotlight uh, you, Autumn. I don't know what I was going for. My... I keep like changing it from going like different directions. <laughs> Try and see yeah. what I see. That's what's <laughs> hard. I don't know which way mine goes either. You're on mute, Lonnie. I'm not sure she, hey, Lottie. Lottie or Brooke, you're, you're on mute. Oh, okay. So you really quick. Yeah. Are we supposed to all be showing ours? Yeah, throw them up. Uh, it's just so great to see everybody's work. Oh, this is amazing. Let's, going crazy here outside. Let's, uh, so you can hear me again. Okay, so um, yes, let me, oh my goodness. Okay, now I have to, okay, I get it to work. I'm blown away. I mean, by the differences, I, I, I want to say something about each and every one, but I can't. People, this is just amazing. And we've been painting together. Uh, wow, I wish I could just, can we do screenshots for sure? Okay, so yeah, let's all take for 10 seconds, like 10 seconds or whatever. Let's all keep up our painting. And so everybody can scroll through and see what everyone has been creating. Um, and, you know, usually I, I finish my workshops by asking people to share one word, but there's just too many people here today. Um, I can say, I, oh man, if I could, I have this feeling here. It's um, beautiful. I, that is my word, uh, my word for today. Um, and I really, oh my goodness, I can't believe what I'm looking at. I, I really want to thank you for being here, trying this, painting with me. And I can see you really did the process because sometimes I can say all those things, but people still, you know, uh, paint a bird or, you know, they still, they're not, they don't dare to let go. I don't see that on a single one of yours, like everybody. <sighs> so, oh, um, thank you so much. If you, um, if you would like to paint again with me, um, I do work workshops here and I can change it up. Like we could, I have so many ideas. Like we could start with looking at certain images, writing a little, poem like an easy way of writing a poem and using that as a jump off point to start painting using that as an inspiration or there's so many things I could do a whole class where we just use the, the the color wheel and play with I mean if you're interested maybe just email uh, Brooke because all of you are amazing people so I just want to paint with you email studio life and we can do if you want to do something different from today because like I'll be teaching exactly this class a month from now. But if you'd like to do, let's say the poem class or whatever, email Brooke. If we have at least five people together, we can we can do a class again. And it will just be, because painting is like anything, right? You just have to keep on doing it. And um, it'll be so fun to paint again with all of you. And maybe hopefully life at some point when COVID is over. Um, so yes, so thank you. Um, if you're on Instagram, I'm on my, it's my first name and last name and an art, Lottie Godi Arts. Find me there. Uh, same for the website, LottieGodi.com. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you want to paint with me, you can email uh, Studio Life. Um, let's see, is there any last things I want to say to you? Um, let me take a breath. I'm overwhelmed by all this. Um, I, I think that is, that's it. If every, if you feel complete then that's beautiful. Otherwise you can always continue to paint. Um, I found, uh, I love to end with a quote and I found this quote by Eileen Caddy. And uh, she said, she's trying to work everything out with your minds. It will get you nowhere. Live by intuition and inspiration and let your whole life be a revelation. 
which I thought was so perfect for painting because often it's a revelation, right? Like you don't know where you start when you're starting and then something appears. Um, so I'll end with that. Um, are there any last questions or things, comments? Um, if it's a huge thank you from all of us. Yeah. I hope you can see the chat. Oh, Ellen, go ahead. So what's the best way to clean up the acrylics? I'm in an apartment and how, I mean, they're plastic. So I'm always afraid to get them down my drain. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that either. So there's a few things you can do. You can either uh, grab a white canvas and smear the paint on it. And it's a perfect start for your next painting. You can, what I've seen people who have uh, the, you know, the plastic kind of palettes, they just let the paint dry in there. And then you can just peel it off once it's dry and toss it in the, toss it in the trash. Or you can just grab, uh, you know, a paper towel and just scrape off as much paint as you can and throw it in the trash. Um, yeah, that, those are, I think those okay. are. Good. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yes, it was great. It was fun. I, I added Thank some you. trees. <laughs> you added some trees? I added some trees. Did you see? Did no, you see? No, it? show me one more time. Okay, let me see. Oh, you see, oh, you see the whole painting changed. Yeah. <gasps> oh, that's a landscape. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I, I like I like it with the trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, just one focal point and the whole thing changes. Um, okay. Well, thank you so good. much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. And uh, have a wonderful evening. Hopefully, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Sure um, I'll email out those pictures for anyone who's interested in looking at them again or seeing them. Thank you so much, Lottie and Brooke. We really appreciate your evening and your time. Thank you.